everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Sophie and this channel is chronicling my journey to get my life back after having been diagnosed with some chronic illnesses. Today is going to sort of be a more lighthearted video. I thought it would be interesting and kind of funny to share just some crazy things that I've heard from doctors over the past almost three years now. I'm sure many of you also have your own crazy doctor quotes that you could add. Um, but let's get into this because it's quite amusing. Um, the first one was said to me by a nurse practitioner at my pulmonologist office. I was seeing her instead of the pulmonologist and she was kind of thinking out loud about what could be causing my shortness of breath and my oxygen to fall. And she had said, maybe it's the small airways in your neck not visualized by CT scan. And I looked at her and I said, there are no small airways in your neck. There's just the trachea. And her eyes got real wide and she just sort of looked at me. And then she switched the topic. But it just sort of made me wonder, like, if they're trying to pull that on me when they know I worked in the medical field, like, what are they doing to other patients that may not have the medical knowledge as someone who works in the medical field has? So that was really disappointing. And I believe at that same appointment, she prescribed me some inhalers for obstructive lung disease. And I told her that I didn't have obstructive lung disease, that the pulmonary function tests that I have restrictive lung disease. And, she, and I also told her that I've tried inhalers in the past and they didn't help. And she said these are different inhalers and just to try them. But of course they didn't help because I don't have obstructive lung disease. I don't have asthma or COPD among any of the other obstructive lung diseases. Um, then I guess I'm going in the reverse order of what I have on my list. I've only had one doctor, surprisingly, tell me that I was just anxious which was interesting because he was the same doctor who convinced me to wear the oxygen 24 seven. And he also was the doctor who commented on how much better I seemed when I came back after starting to wear the oxygen 24 seven. So my first visit, he said to start wearing it 24 seven. The second visit, he told me how much better I seemed to be doing. And the third visit, he said, you don't really need the oxygen, you're just anxious. So I had to give him data about what happens when I don't wear the oxygen. And then I dumped him after the third visit because you don't need that in your life. If your doctor is dismissing you like that, dump them. You don't need that in your life. You don't. Uh, this is an oldie but a goodie. So this goes back to probably March or April of 2020. At least April, maybe March. I don't... No, definitely April. My first hospitalization, when I was telling them about what my pulse ox was, they said, the pulse ox is probably wrong. You're, you look fine. We'll get to the, like, you look fine. That's another one. Um, but then after they saw my, my x-ray and CT scan, they then believed me that the pulse ox was probably right. Um, looks can be deceiving. But, like, I've been told the pulse ox is wrong. My blood pressure monitor is wrong. My heart rate monitor is wrong. Um, basically anything I do at home is wrong and it's not accurate. Similarly, I've been told that some of the medical tests I've had done, the echocardiogram was wrong, the pulse ox during the cardiopulmonary exercise test was wrong. Um, so it just seems like if you don't fit the picture of what you're supposed to look at like, that whatever is giving them data is wrong. So I guess we'll move to the, you don't present like you have X, Y, Z. You don't present like you have pneumonia. You don't present like you have a mitochondrial issue. You don't present like you have fill in the blank. You cannot tell by looking at someone all of the time whether or not that person has a disease or not. I don't know why doctors don't seem to understand this. They went to a lot of school and they should know better, but it seems like a lot of us get told, oh, you don't look like you have X. 
and I don't really see how what I look like has anything to do with what I do or do not have. For example, when I was at Cleveland Clinic the last time, I ended up having pneumonia. I guarantee you I did not look like I had pneumonia. And I've had pneumonia and been hospitalized for it here locally, and my lungs sounded perfectly clear. So I did not look like or sound like I had pneumonia, but I did. That's another oldie but a goodie. Another oldie but goodie is you're too young to have fill in the blank. You're too young to have this many issue this many episodes of pneumonia. You're too young to have a carotid problem. You're too young to have a joint problem. You're you're too young to have whatever it is. Uh, my body did not get the memo that I was too young. Uh, if there like a refund for the body that I could get since it's doing things it's not supposed to and I'm apparently too young to have these problems because I'm as old as I am. I'm 35 at the moment and I have these problems. Again, age, but illness does not know age all the time. It's just because you're a certain age does not mean you cannot have a certain illness. Um, there may be some illnesses that are more predisposed. You're more predisposed if you're older or younger, but for the most part, you can get pretty much anything at any age. Um, and then this is a more honest one that doctors will say. They'll just say that doesn't make sense. Normally, it's when I would explain to them why I think I was having a symptom. And I've had doctors say, oh, well, that doesn't make sense. And then I've had other doctors say with the exact same explanation, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So it's always sort of a crapshoot when you go to the doctor as to what you're going to hear. And I try to go into appointments expecting to hear all of these things just because it's just easier to handle mentally if you go in prepared for it. It doesn't rattle you as much. But I have, I think I've been pretty lucky as far as some crazy things doctors have said because I do have abnormal tests, even though doctors sometimes they'll say the test isn't that abnormal or it's not abnormal enough to do anything about, which sometimes the test isn't abnormal enough to do anything about. That's a fair enough statement. But I, since I do have abnormalities in my test, I think that has stopped a lot of doctors from making a lot of other, like, it's all in your head type of comments to me. And I know I hear that a lot from other people in the chronic illness community, that their doctors blame things on anxiety, depression, and stuff like that all the time because they can't see it on a test, which I really think is a lazy way out for the doctor. And if the doctor doesn't know, they need to just say, I don't know. And if they're willing to help you figure it out, they should be like, I don't know, but let's try to figure this out together. And if they're not willing to do that, they should just be upfront with you and say, I don't know what's going on and I really don't know how to help you. Let me refer you to someone else or let me send you somewhere else. But that doesn't seem to do, see, ugh. this is why I do most of my work earlier in the day. It doesn't seem to be what a lot of doctors do. They just seem to blame the patient when they don't know things. They don't seem to be able to own their own knowledge gap. They want to think that if they don't know it, it doesn't exist, and that's not true. Anyway, those are a few of the things that I've heard from doctors uh, that I could think of. Again, I've been working on this list for a while. That's all I can think of at the moment. There's probably more, but you get the gist. Doctors are only human. I can forgive them for some of the comments. Other comments, it's just sort of rolling your eyes and just wanting to shake them and be like, why don't you just say you don't know? It's okay if you don't know. But that is going to be it for this video. It will be Saturday when you are seeing this, and I will be back on Wednesday to do a doctor roundup video after I talk to the sleep doctor. Until then, guys. Later.